Hey everybody, Ananias here, and I told you this was coming. <laughs> We're going to be playing Vast Steel on the TurboGrafx CD. Uh, this is actually not a Super CD, just a standard CD. And it, to my knowledge, it was only released on the TurboGrafx-16. Now, uh, it did get a sequel in Japan. Uh, unfortunately, we never got it here. Um, hopefully, somebody out there has uh, completed a, a translation. I, I hadn't looked. Um, but, uh, but anyway. So, this one... Okay, you can play Versus or Scenario. Now, let me delve into Scenario here. Um, obviously, just start from scratch. So, I'm going to kind of go over the, the, the plot, uh, if you will, here. So, basically, your father, who was the emperor of the galaxy, what have you, uh, dies, and he has two sons, and he names the eldest the heir, and uh, after a few years, the younger son's not happy with the way things are run, and so he... Uh, decides to begin a civil war, um, age-old tale, uh, and basically it's up to you to you kind of you get to pick which whichever son you want to control. Um, and I'll, I'm going to be honest with you, this game easily could have been split into two separate games. Each campaign that you can choose is I, I don't want to say obnoxiously long because it really doesn't overstay its welcome to me because I enjoyed the game. I, I absolutely loved this game. Um, but the uh, <laughs> it was it was one of those where you, I, I, I just kept being very surprised um, as it progressed that um, it, it wasn't over. Uh, <laughs> it, it is. I, I was trying to I, trying to guess how many hours I've got I had into this game. Uh, years and years ago, and I, I just I don't remember. Um, just to be honest with you, uh, this is a working working designs game, which uh, that company I think is still around uh, even now. Um, but basically, what you have this game is a yeah, there's really two parts to it. It's a strategy at its core. It's a, it's a hexagonal um, uh, map strategy game. Uh, so you're kind of looking down at, at a game board, basically a huge map. Uh, some of the map they're, they're different sizes that you know the maps this first one is is not by any means the, the largest and it's it's not the smallest either but um, it, it is on the smaller side um, it, but you'll get a good a good look at it here in a second but and then the second stage if you will or, or part of the game is a it is more of an arcade type game and that's whenever the the um, your pieces which are on mechs uh, fight each other um, and it really it becomes a one-on-one -on -one one on one uh, a fighting match. Um, Let's go. Uh, you'll get a much better feel for that here in just a second too. But most of the mechs have three different attacks. Uh, they'll have a, a standard kind of a rocket cannon type attack. Uh, they'll also have a secondary bullet attack, which is obviously you know much weaker. And then they have an up close quarters attack. Um, the, uh, the the two armies. As far as the differences between those, uh, you know, obviously other than the, the plot lines that you follow, um, as you can tell right now, there's, there's full voiceovers in, in, in between each battle, pretty much every battle. Um, there's a cutscene kind of explaining a little bit of what's going on kind of behind the scenes as well. And there's even branching paths in this game, too. So if you take, you know, either one of these sons... Um, and, and follow their campaign. Once you get, uh, you know, past, you know, whatever it is, whatever level you're on, there are times where you get to choose where you go next. Now, sometimes it's just a matter of which one you do first. Uh, and in other words, you're going to end up going down both paths. Other times, if again, if if I'm remembering correctly, um, you don't. You, you pick one or the other. Um, and I think. In those cases, your advisor tells you that uh, that there's not going to be time for both or, or something along those lines. As a matter of fact, and there's there's different advantages to doing different paths, and it, it it's made clear, relatively clear, um, from your advisor as to what's to be gained uh, and or lost by by choosing the. Uh, choosing whatever path you do. So it may be that um, that you're in a better position for reinforcements, which means basically that um, it, you know you may start that next that next map with more more uh, more mechs on the on the uh, on the battlefield or it may be that the prices are lower. Um, from now on um, for for purchasing the mechs or you know, it's things like that. Um, this game the the, the tabletop or the map 
reminds me a lot of tactics games um, that they have now, except the tactics games are more three-dimensional. Um, so there's a, there's a, there's certain advantages to you know higher elevation and those kinds of things. This doesn't really work that way. This is all two-dimensional. Um, I'm sure there were you know, graphical constraints as far as that goes, but. Um, it, it's much more, uh, let's see, terrain oriented. So you're going to be able to fight on ice and water and, and uh, obviously just stand, you know, grass and you know, various fields and swamp and just all kinds of stuff. There's even battles that take place in outer space and there's different terrain types there. You've got just standard space, there's, you know, um, kind of these quasar type. <laughs> type environments which are just crazy looking uh, asteroid belts and, and again just all, all kinds of stuff like that so I we'll go through some of that now on top of various terrain types you have uh, basically your your home base which is I think in every single mission um, it is basically the objective is, is to take the home base of your opponent um, there's also um, factory spaces as well as cities. Um, the, the advantages to those, the, the more cities and factories that you control at the beginning of your turn, uh, the more money that you have in order to purchase more mechs. Um, they also have the advantage that if, a, uh, if one of your mechs uh, is on a city or factory, then they're going to uh, replenish some amount of health uh, and weapons and you know um, ammunition with the factories uh, being that you replenish all of it and the cities a, a, a partial and, and I'm not sure if it's a, a set number or if it's a percentage I, I just don't remember um, your home base is where you create uh, and build your mechs uh, whenever you create a mech it's placed adjacent to your fact or to your uh, to your home base and you have with it being hexagonal game board, you have six bases um, around your home base. Now, one thing that dawned on me whenever I was I was considering doing this uh, doing this video was one thing I I'd never attempted that I can remember is to go in to purchase a mech and then try to place it um, actually around a factory. Um, it would kind of make sense that you would be able to build mechs from factories, but I never took my cursor from the home base and then went over to a factory um, and tried to place it. I just can't ever remember you know, trying to do that, but um, but anyway, uh, again, to my knowledge, I don't think this game was ever released on any other console. Yeah, it, it might have been released on PC, um, but I, the fighting wouldn't have, have translated well unless you had a, a controller, um, and I don't know how common... I, this is going to sound horribly uh, ignorant on my part, but I don't know how common uh, PC controllers were at, at this time. I, just, I wasn't a PC gamer. I'm sure in '93 they were they were everywhere. I, but um, you know, I, I just don't I just don't know how popular this you know would have been or, or was or maybe it was. I just I, I don't remember hearing anything about this game being anywhere else. Um, but, but this is one that I absolutely loved, and, and I, I do remember playing the absolute crap out of this uh, growing up. And um, again, I'd hate to guess how many hours I have in this. I didn't realize this opening cutscene was quite this long. I'm really thinking about skipping it, but um, you know what? I, I think I'm going to, just so we can get kind of to the nitty-gritty, because really not paying attention to it anyway. That bald-headed guy is your advisor, and he's basically coming to. Um, well, he's he's the advisor of Stefan, who is the um, the younger brother. He's kind of the rebel. Now, the big difference between the two, the two armies. Well, there's two. Uh, Phileo's army, who is the uh, the blue team, if you will. He, he's he's the um, he's he's the incumbent and um, the the royal army, I guess you could say, uh, imperial army. Um, they're stronger. Um, just in general, as far as the mechs go, uh, typically speaking, he's going to start with more mechs on the on the field. He may or may not start with more cities or factories, but not by much. I mean, just a little bit. Typically, um, there are situations where the rebel army may have the upper hand, and you know that kind of thing. Um, the biggest difference between these two armies, though, and it it seems like it would be a small one, but it's not. Um, 
the Imperial Army, whenever you fire your primary weapon, it's delayed in almost every single mech. Um, in Stefan, the Rebel Army, it's not. Uh, primarily theirs, when you push the button, it fires quickly. It's a weaker shot um, than, than Phileo. So, I mean, he's got the, Phileo has the upper hand in the, in the, uh, in the potency of the weapon as well as um, as well as the armor of the mech and those kinds of things. Another advantage to Stefan has to do with the um, well, I, I feel like it's an advantage anyway. Has to do with the range of the cheapest mech because you're going to end up buying a lot of uh, in in Stefan's case they're called scouts. In Phileo's case they're called grunts. Um, but Stefan's cheapest mech actually has a long, or has a further range than Phileo's. Um, again, it's not as powerful. It's not as its armor's not as good, um, but um, but anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Stefan. He, he's the one that I, I chose first. Whenever I, I I played this, you know, years and years back, um, I just felt like it was he was an easier character to play. Um, neither one thing I will say about the about the plot about the story is that they don't make it clear. Who's the good guy or the bad guy? There, there, there's really not, not one. Um, if you select Phileo, um, the Imperial, he's more of a he's kind of understands his his brother's aggravation and frustration, um, but at the same time he is trying to do what he feels is best. Um, Stefan is is desperately Hello, trying to Majesty. do what's right for the people, um, but he's also battle. at the same time kind of being egged on by this um, by this bald headed guy. No pun intended. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and skip. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to uh, to skip this. So it's it's a very understandable story, and and just and by understandable, I'm not talking about you can understand. Uh, I'm talking about it's a very um, it, it's a story that. Um, it just kind of makes sense as you're going. Now, that's another advantage. The Imperials, if I'm not mistaken, go first every single time. There might be um, a, a world that you go to where they don't. Um, I, I just, but it's it's very very. Um, it'd be very very uh, very rare. Um, so what they're doing now or there is they're purchasing the purchasing max. Um, Okay, so uh, if you couldn't <laughs> haven't already guessed, this is going to be a multi-parter uh, because there's just flat out not enough time to actually play the game and, and do all those things. Now, now one thing I'll say is Phileo gets to go first, but because Stefan goes second, he gets the cash uh, from from the first round. Like, so you get paid at the, based on what you have at the beginning of the turn. And with Phileos, I don't think he got that, that payment. I didn't look up there to, to look real quick. But I think he just starts with you know, a base level amount of cash that isn't as much as I got. But I might be wrong on that. Anyway. Okay, so you can kind of see down here, well, to the left of my cursor here, there's a little pictograph. And, it, and that kind of indicates or helps indicate, to, well, I guess to remind you of the terrain type. So this is just your standard grass field. Um, that's a little bit thicker underbrush. That's um, actually water um, with with kind of some rocks in it. Um, that's mountainous area. Uh, these are your, what your cities look like. Those little tube looking things. Those are your factories. That's what your factory looks like. There's their home base. A everything blue there is obviously is theirs. Um, there is a way to hop out and take a look at the map. There we go. And I, yeah, I know. It's, fantastic graphics right the um, <laughs> the dark uh, in their case the dark blue which is really tough to see it's a little easier to see here than in the in the red the dark red are mechs the light red are cities um, and it just kind of gives you a sort of idea of of the of the terrain and of course you know I can click on this button and it should um, actually take me to that spot that I selected so so just kind of let me lets me zoom in there. So again, not a huge map, um, but it it's bigger than some, but not nearly as large as others. Um, so let's let's go in here real quick. Again, I'm gonna spend this video primarily uh, just kind of explaining the the setup, and then I'll actually go in on the next video and show you guys how 
um, you know, the battling or the fighting and all that good stuff. And might even do a third video and just play through this entire first first level. But this is the, my home base. So, so a lot of this I'm just I'm going by memory, but I played this so much that I I think it's not a problem. Okay, so that's your scout. That's called a blender. That's a sand rat, etc. Different mechs do better in different terrain. So, for example, a sand rat, if you end up on a desert planet, that type of thing, or in a desert environment, these are are supposed to be much better. Now, I remember from just from years ago that they have a delayed shot. I'm not a fan of that. You can practice with it uh, and get and get pretty decent at it. So, I don't want to I don't want it to come across like okay, Phileo, you know the 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 Imperial brother who I said most of his mechs are delayed. It's like you want to stay away from that. It just it takes more practice it is really what it boils down to. Okay, so anyway, so under the scout, the G number there is how much it costs, and you can see you have seventy seven hundred hundred dollars right now, and each each scout here costs two hundred and forty. Um, the HP is is hit points, of course. AC I think is armor class, um, and that makes sense. Um, TY is terrain for whatever reason. So the scout is is pretty decent at everything. Um, the attack, the AT is attack, um, so that's how strong their primary weapon is, I think. That doesn't make sense, the more I'm thinking about it. Um, I don't remember what that AT number is. That might be some type of average, uh, between the primary weapon and second, secondary. It's just kind of a quick reference number, maybe. MV is movement, so under ideal conditions, that's how many spaces that the scout can move. So by ideal or conditions, I mean this, this stuff, which is just your standard. It's not desert. It's just your standard terrain. So, um, so in that terrain, he can move seven spaces. Um, pretty much anything else is going to be. I think everything else is going to be less. I think that's again under ideal. So even if you have a scout in outer space, I don't think he's going to move above seven. I think that's it. Um, RD is rear defense. Um, you don't want to think about that too much. Just realize that if you get hit in the back, you're going to take more damage than if you get hit in the front. Um, there on the right is the weapon type, uh, which in this case is a, 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 the, the on the right there at the very top is missile. Um, you do have some other things like that's a wave uh, beam. It just kind of tells you what to expect. Um, the AT there, and that's why I balked at the AT in the second column. The AT on the right there, under missile, is the strength of the missile. So that's the missile's attack. The B is how many bullets you, that you have as far as missiles go. Now, you can build those back up if, as I mentioned before, if you if you um, if you uh, stay if you begin the round uh, on a city or a factory, it'll build it can build that up. Factory completely, city partially. Um, Balkan is your secondary weapon, which is just a, like a little pea shooting, you know, tiny bullet type type deal. Um, it's got an attack of one, and you have 255 bullets. It, it's a very rapid firing shot that doesn't go very far. Now I mentioned there were three attacks. Your third attack is a close range attack. For most of these mechs, it's a punch, basically. Um, although some of them will shoot a flame or, or something along those lines. Um, so that's basically the the nitty gritty of it. There, um, these are all various various uh, scouts or um, various uh, mechs you can you can build and, and buy. Um, this is a transport. You'll notice it does not have a primary weapon. You do not want to get into a fight with this thing uh, because it's you, you you're going to end up losing it more than likely. Uh, the transports though do exactly that. This level of transport can transport one mech, um, so it, that's all it can house. But now, what's handy about them is that um, you can, for example, if if this nutcase, if I had a nutcase in in the eagle, <laughs> and the eagle can make a turn, and then the nutcase that's in the eagle can then make its turn. So it's almost like you can you can almost double move these things. These are really handy, especially on a larger board. Um, you can 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 buy an eagle, start it at your um, at your home base, build whatever whatever you want, put it in the eagle at the beginning, 
then at the at the uh, or I'm sorry at the end of your turn you can like I said build in that case it'll land right in the in the transport that's connected to the uh, to the home base then at the beginning of your next turn you move the eagle as far as it'll go you then move whatever mech was in it as far as it can go okay and then um, on the next turn you can then bring the eagle back to the home base set it there and then build another mech and put it in there so it's kind of a way to to really help kind of throw these mechs out there you there is a restriction on how many mechs you can have on the on the board um, you know total mechs and I think that that uh, varies based on um, based on the map but I, I may be wrong on that it, it may be a static number and it may increase as you uh, as you play the game um, but anyway, there's a bunch of different things here. Not a ton right now because, it, again, the game just started. So you don't have a bunch to pick from. You do add more. Um, and you do add more, like, ones that are based more on the terrain that you're about to experience. So if you go to a desert planet, you're going to have you're, you're gonna have some different, different mechs to pick from. Some additional desert ones or all uh, terrain types. Um, the toaster... This one has a primary weapon, I think. I mean, it says imploder, but it doesn't list how many shots and all that. Um, some of the the larger transports can transport three mechs, and I don't remember if that's one of them or not. But anyway, so I, I'm going to stop right here because uh, I feel like I went through and gave enough information. So, <laughs> uh, so bear with me. Um, I'll end up doing a, an actual. A, a, a video where we actually get into some gameplay, and we will do some of that, uh, some of that arcade type, uh, type action. So, anyway, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and uh, well, actually, you know what? I don't want to accidentally hit. I'm not going to close on that. I'll close over here. Uh, so, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me. Uh, take care.